Hey YouTube, I'm the Will of DC, and on a very special episode of YouTube News today, I have amazing stand-up comic, political pundit, and amazing new YouTube star with his new show, Caffeinated, Mr. John Fugel, saying thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for lowering your standards this, this evening. <laughs> well, thank you for lowering, for classing up the joint with your suit. I'm, I'm, I'm I apologize of, for this. <laughs> yeah, I had a parole hearing before I came, so Ooh, forgive me. I, I'm sure we're going to talk about lots of awesome stuff. Stay I'm tuned not for this to episode. Cub Scout pack. <laughs> So I saw a video you did recently where you talk about hating the term bullying, and I really appreciated it because it is such kind of like an archaic term. Why do you think all of us that, you know, hate the whole bullying concept still use this bullying term? When I was a kid and guidance counselors or adults or ineffectual assistant principals would call my tormentors bullies, I knew you're full of shit, they don't have to take you seriously. Because I thought that bullying was such an outdated, archaic, Archie Comics term that in no way did justice to the kind of brutality kids get away with. The kind of brutality today sees so many LBGT kids taking their own lives. And I think that if you want to stop bullying, the first step is to stop calling it bullying and call it something appropriate. No one takes the term seriously. Uh, you know, it's like bullying is what is what, you know, the little rascals got from Butch and William. You know, we don't ever say, oh, didn't De Niro bully Nick Nolte's family in Cape Fear? I call it criminal harassment. I, 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 I call it peer abuse. I say, let's call it something, you know, that's, that's much more sharp-edged. And as a kid, I was insulted. I really was picked on heavily. And um, I thought that that word trivialized the suffering, the very real suffering that children go through and that children are allowed to get away with. As a professional stand-up comic, when YouTube was first starting, how did you feel about the comedy or the caliber of comedy, I guess, on YouTube? And, you know, compared to now, where there's a lot more high-quality content and stuff, how do you feel about the comedy on YouTube and its evolution? You know, I felt the same way a lot of people felt when, when comedy began on YouTube. Oh my god, it looks like a hostage video. Um, you know, is someone kidnapped in Beirut and they're telling dick jokes? I don't understand. Uh, so, so it took a while, but keep in mind, when, when talking films began, they all said that was a fad, too. Uh, and I knew right away that we were witnessing the birth and infancy of a whole new art form and a whole new way of reaching people. You know, you used to try out material in clubs, and if that worked, you would do it on TV. Now you can really try out material on the internet, and if that works, you can do it on online radio shows, and if that works, you can do it in clubs and, and on TV. Do you think with more and more legitimate, uh, traditional media talents that are very skilled and experienced coming to YouTube, that YouTube's game is going to get stepped up, that it's going to take YouTube to kind of a different level? I hope so. I mean, and I'm sure it will, but at the same time, you're also going to have a lot more crap YouTube shows. You know, it's only natural. The more the more you get, uh, it's not all going to be quality. It'll be like TV or pop music or films with a lot of crap, and you'll have to go digging for the real special things, and people will find the things that they like. So uh, I, I do hope it raises uh, the game, but I'm also very happy to see how much long-form stuff has begun on YouTube. I think a lot of folks were afraid it was just lowering our collective attention span all the way. And when you see that there are, you know, hour-long YouTube shows that get 100,000 hits a week, um, I think that's really, really positive, and it gets rid of a lot of the, uh, the fears people have that we were going to be even stupider than we were before, <laughs> and that's saying something. Yeah, it's very commonplace on YouTube. It's common practices to keep your video around three-minute length. And they're right. I mean, I just launched my first show on, on, on Polypop, and uh, my first episode is four minutes, and I sent it around to a few friends, and that's what they all said. They said, hey, great stuff, man, but four minutes, too long for the American public. And I'm like, oh my god, can we cut Lawrence of Arabia down to like a <laughs> solid six, maybe, so we can just get through it? I got things to do. I got sandwiches to make and, and lattes to order. Do you think YouTube's going to come to a tipping point where people can watch 30-minute and hour-long stuff the way we watch television now, or is this more of a short-form media? I don't know. I think our attention span is so short, I can't believe we still say attention span. We haven't come up with a cute little, you know, at spans. I mean, like, why can't, how, why do we still say attention? That's four syllables. I mean, my God, we can, we can reduce that to one and a half, I'm sure. Uh, you know, quality will out, and uh, people will watch something longer if it's good. So talking specifically about Polypop now, you've been working with them a lot, and now you have this whole new show. What about Polypop made you want to join it? Because you have your own, you know, brand and your own kind of name that you're bringing and reputation that you're bringing to it. What made, what made about them made you want to join them? Um, as I got to know more people who worked at Maker, as I began seeing the programmings, and, and I, I was really inspired by what they were trying to do. And, uh, and then I, I, I just got very, very excited. And once I made the, the choice to, to come on, uh, and now that I'm actually seeing it, and, and my first episode has gone up, and I'm seeing what the creative team does with my little rants, 
uh, it, it makes me like want to throw out half the stuff I've already written and just go at it all over again. How hard have you found it to take your already pre-existing audience since you have been, you know, touring for so long, so many years, being a stand-up comic that people around the country know you, but how do you get all these people that know you to then now watch your stuff online? It's really, it's really more about building up the new audience to me. I mean, it's, it, you know, I, I've done a lot of different things in, in TV and film and stage and everyone, you know, kind of knows me. Like, I'm the guy people stop on the street and say, hey, are you famous? And I have to say, if I was, you wouldn't have to ask that. So for me, it's more about, you know, bringing in the folks who already know what I do. But I also felt there were a lot of people who didn't really know what I did. You know, when you're working in conventional media, you have to follow their rules. And I always felt like Johnny Bravo. I fit the suit, you know, but I, I wasn't really getting to be myself. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show and let me know what is in store for your future for the rest of this year on YouTube and movie and TVs and all that stuff. Uh, well, I'm doing three tours right now. I'm doing the Sexy Liberal Comedy Tour with Stephanie Miller and uh, Hal Sparks and Aisha Tyler. Um, we launched that last year and, uh, you know, that tour wound up... Um, being something that I talk everybody into doing, and I brought in my old theater agent to, to manage it, and we wound up, uh, it wound up grossing a million bucks the first year. Uh, Aretha Franklin came to see us in Detroit with her entourage. We had Lily Tomlin and Rob Reiner join us on stage in LA, and our album, uh, Sexy Liberal Comedy Tour Volume 1 became the first political comedy tour to ever reach number one on the Amazon, iTunes, and Billboard comedy charts. And that was completely independent. No label support, no corporate support, just me and three other people just working our hearts out. Uh, I'm also touring my off-Broadway solo show, uh, Guilt, A Love Story, which is about my peculiar Catholic upbringing. Uh, that was played off-Broadway and got a Drama League nomination. I'm also doing a tour with just me and Hal Sparks called the Politics, Sex, and Religion Tour. It's everything you can't talk about at the dinner table. Uh, and I like living on the road. That's fun. And I kind of feel like, you know, the live performances fuel the online shows, and the online shows generate interest in the, in the live tours. I mean, one of the only reasons to do TV is to sell tickets to, to, to live appearances. Uh, I'm writing a book about uh, Christianity and politics and how, uh, how to use the Bible when debating your right-wing uh, uh, fundamentalist Christian loved ones. Really? Because they tend to be against Jesus on pretty much everything. Um, I got a couple of movies that are coming out this year that I'm in, uh, a film I did with Parker Posey that just played at Sundance, and uh, oh, and I have a baby, so there's that. <laughs> and so that's all we've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching YouTube News. Remember, as always, leave all your comments down below, rate thumbs up, and subscribe, and make sure you go and subscribe to Pie Pop, and all of uh, John Fugelsang's link will be down in the description below to find him, and what else do you have got going on? Uh, I'm gonna be doing uh, the Stephanie Miller Sexy Liberal Comedy Tour uh, with me and Hal Sparks and Stephanie and a couple of very special, huge celebrity surprise guests that I can't announce. I told you, am I lying? They're it's, big. They're, they're big. They're big. This is going to be uh, they're legit. The they're... Pantages Theater here in Hollywood uh, on this Saturday, the 28th of July. If you're watching this after, then I'm sorry, but it was a great show. You You'll see it. this on Friday. So tomorrow, go buy tickets. They'll be in the link below. In the link go below. Find... It's yeah. the Pantag and again, go to Ticketmaster. They're, they're always cool guys at Ticketmaster. And, uh, and I'm gonna, my show is called Caffeinated, and that's now on the Polypop channel. And uh, I do all kinds of stuff on TV and internet and gay porn and you name it. You're just a media empire in and of yourself. That's right. I have a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on. You know what? I, I, I'm so happy to be here on the show, and uh, I want to thank you. I, I was nervous about the interview, but it went so it, well. I really, you asked the right questions, and I, I really feel, looking back on it now, that uh, we really pulled something off that was very special. Nine-nine problems, but a bitch ain't one.